Welcome along to Rockingham Motor Speedway near Corby in Northamptonshire for event 7 of the 2012 Logson Group Porsche Championship. Let's go to the paddock to talk to Nick Hull. So Nick, third season uh, in the Porsche Championship, uh, how's it gone so far for you? Yeah, we've been having a better year, um, it's, you know, steadily had a good result at Silverstone last meeting, um, I think finished sixth, uh, which, was, which was really good for me, enjoyed it, um, especially after Brands had a little bit of an incident caught up in somebody else's accident at Brands, um, which is always, uh, always, always a bit frustrating, uh, so yeah, just, just glad to get out there and finish. Um, qualified here ninth today, so I'm quite happy with that. Um, Chasing, chasing Mick Seller, always seems to be uh, 300s behind him, so I've got to sort of work on that, but um, yeah, looking forward to the race. Pole position goes to Richard Styrian with Jerry Taylor alongside Steve Boyles and David Beerman on the second row. 22 cars on the grid today, the pole position for the low fat, the production box is going to Steve Brown from Steve Potts. 94 pole goes the way of Simon Hawksley with Sean Siddle back in the championship after a round away. Alistair Kirkham and Carl Rossing completing row two for the 924s. Here's the view then from Adam Croft in car number five. Had some good results so far, has Adam. Fifth in the championship, 157 points. Now Richard Sykes lines up in fifth position qualifying time for Richard at 142.248 one thing you'll notice about Rocky if you've not been with us before is some very fast sections and also some twisty ones as well probably the only thing they lack here at Rockingham is any real gradient but away they go it's a cracking start from the front of the grid Sykes gets away well now sometimes here at Rockingham the inside line is not the fastest and look at how much speed Mike Seller in yellow in yellow carries down into turn one now if you get it wrong on turn one there's no run off there's no no gravel no catch fencing like we had in the old days it's just the concrete wall so it's 100 mile an hour plus to a dead stop that's what the drivers are having to contend with so this was the view then from Ian Loggy. bit of a problem in the Union flag car car that of course we have seen Richard Sykes racing over the course of the season recovered well though here we go on board with him again coming into Chapman Curve and again fighting it there's been uh, some car swapping going on amongst the team Newbridge team which is uh, I think eight, several drivers just trying to find their own particular favourite car so Rocky and Motor Speedway a bit like Silverstone we saw last time I uh, mentioned it during the Silverstone coverage that you can watch there and watch the TV and that's Rebecca Jackson out front runner in the 924s Rebecca Jackson what a miserable start to the weekend for her well, Rebecca qualified third in class. As we go back to our race leaders, and it's Richard Styrin in front at the moment. So Styrin in the red 99 car, chasing him is Jerry Taylor in 16th. Third place is David Beerman. John Beerman not with us this weekend as they come through turn four. And this is where they get up to top speed. Look how close they're getting to that wall. This place is not for the faint-hearted. And it's Richard Styrin, who you've got to say, is on a little bit of a roll at the moment. Maybe roll's the wrong word to use, perhaps tempting fate. Uh, Richard, having had two wins and fastest laps at Silverstone last time, two fastest laps in the round before at Brands, including a win and a second place. And there is Simon Hawksley, just making his way past the third position production boxster of Bernie Printy so back with Jerry Taylor in car number 16 I was about to say earlier on before we saw the demise of Rebecca Jackson that Rockingham on TV cameras always looks empty it's it's built to cater for 60 to 100,000 people and obviously in national racing uh, BRSCC racing, BARC racing, even the touring cars you'll see a lot of empty spaces because although en enough people come to watch them uh, the venue never looks full so don't be put off if you're a sponsor or even thinking about 
having a go at racing yourself that no one's going to watch you because there are plenty of people on the inside on the uh, in the Rockingham building itself the main building and also on top of the pit garages which is a superb place to, to, to uh, watch the other great thing about Rockingham is that all those thousands of seats you can see all of the all of the circuit pretty much all the time which is wonderful car number 21 Richard Sykes in a white car this weekend so another change for Richard to see if it's a man or machine that's perhaps keeping him off the podium we'll wait and see how he does in this one at the moment he's got to try and deal with Stephen Boyles who is ahead of him Stephen of course getting that superb pole position at Silverstone back on board with Psyche once again outside line turning into the Dean hairpin then it's the short straight past Rebecca Jackson's car on the outside into the right hander at Yentwood minding the marker cones good driving standard so far the marker cones all pretty much staying in place and there is the 924 leader Simon Hawksley coming under pressure from Sean Siddle Sean Siddle in blue having a go Alistair Kirkham in the red and gold car is third place in the 924s a really superb way to start a racing career you could pick up a 924 for a very competitive price obviously the production boxsters are competitive too so you've really got a choice now if you're a new driver to if, if maybe you're not thinking about moving up into the race spec boxsters then buy yourself a a pre-owned a pre-used 924 if you're thinking about coming into the boxsters then maybe the production class is the way to go we're looking at the battle for the race lead but now going back to Richard Sykes in fifth place and challenging Steve Boyles in 27 so 77 I beg your pardon Steve so Sykes putting him under pressure comes into the Brook S is now and looking up the inside line as they come back onto the main straight past turn four you can see the numbering on the wall back into the 924s and we've got a bit of a scrap on for third place because putting pressure on is, is Tony McVinsky, the second red car, number 27. Anthony McVinsky trying to get up onto the podium, having a good look as they come through turn four. The other thing with Rockingham, it, it's a vast space. Well, hanging on to it at the moment is, Ant is uh, Alistair Kirkham. Around turn one they go. Tony McVinsky, the 60-year-old from Cleveland's. Previous ra previously raced in the Centurion Challenge and he's having a very good go is Anthony McVinsky trying to close down on Alistair Kirkham at the moment still the battle ahead in fact it's not a battle first and second Simon Hawksley is clear at the moment Hawksley I think looking for his first win in class he's had a trio of second places in class two at Silverstone last time and one at Brands Hatch the round before that so back with the race for the lead, Richard Styrin. It's a hot day today, 82 degrees, and of course the one thing you might want is a 99, and that's exactly what Jerry Taylor wants to do at the moment. So the Taylor Foundry's teammates having a very good race. It's got a great shot there of how wide the pit lane is here. You've got an inner and an outer one to cope for the American-style racing that Rockingham was built for. Here they come, down into turn four all behaving themselves well not going near the white lines which determine the inside of the circuit one, one thing at Rocky is you tend not to get the penalties that we've been plagued with at Brands Hatch and Silverstone for, for drivers not sticking to the circuit out of the Dean Hairpin down towards Yentwood again great thing I like about Rockingham is this particular configuration the international super sports car circuit it's just over two miles long lots of lefts lots of rights it means there's loads of overtaking opportunities this is the battle then for third position in the 924 class out of the Brook S's that brings them back onto the main straight Rocky a very flexible venue you can have four or five different configurations you're only allowed to use one in MSA Motorsport the uh, Motorsports Association you're only under, under UK rules you're only allowed to use one banked corner on the circuit which is why we don't use turn four and turn one so this is the battle for the lead, Styrin hanging on at the moment, Jerry Taylor back from Olympic duties, Taylor has only been off the podium once, a fourth place back at Snetterton, this is the view from Adam Croft chasing Mike Seller, Croft and Seller qualified fifth and eighth respectively and Adam really putting the pressure on, there he is in the Martini livery car. 
So has a look. Again, coming into the Brook S's. The Brook, a left, right, left series of corners past the Rockingham building on the outside. And Croft goes to the inside line. So Adam Croft having a look down the inside line. Seller on the outside. Who's going to come out of this better? Taking the low line. Gets all four wheels over the apron. Well, I mentioned about the Clark, of course, maybe not talking about advantage he's not gaining a huge advantage there I, I think if he repeats that probably too often they might have a word with him as Sella goes wide and Adam Croft is through Croft through into sixth position also going through there of course is Cliff Graham in the number 12 class so uh, Cliff taking the bat now to Adam Croft as they go around Piff Path which is the innermost part of the circuit and back with our race leaders Richard Styrin still there looking to add another win Styrin in 99 a winner at Cadwell Park two wins for him at Cadwell one win at Brantach two wins at Silverstone and gunning for another win here but down the inside line coming off line now is Jerry Taylor or is he? no he thinks better of it there was a momentary look down the inside as they came along the main straight they make their way around turn one we're going to go back to Ian Loggy, car number 24, love the livery on that car, and equally the number 18, Nick Hull, the man you heard from at the top of the programme. But here we go, on board with Ian. Very hot and sweaty in the cars today, as we mentioned, the hottest day of the year so far. And a 20 minute race is really going to tax these drivers because it's a very demanding circuit. You assume you've got the flat out parts of the circuit along the straight around turn one. So Richard Styrin leading from Jerry Taylor here at Rockingham. Can Richard hold on? Join us after the break to find out. Welcome to another episode of Racing No Filter. Joining me in sunny California, Bill Wood and down in sunny Florida, Peter Keen. We're going to take a look at some of the products HPD has created for the 2012 Honda Civic. And specifically, we're going to show you an install and adjustable sway bar. Until then, folks out there, you take care. Welcome back to Rockingham Motor Speedway for round 13 of the Loxon Group Porsche Championship. We're looking uh, car number 24 Ian Loggy dicing with Nick Hull Hull looks at the getting the 18 car up the inside not quite working for him though at the moment so he'll have to just carry on applying the pressure the run there is down school straight into the Brook S's left hander slightly round to the right and then back to the left again as they rejoin the main circuit lap times here today 1 minute 42 that's an average of 71.37 the slower parts of the circuit the hairpin the Dean hairpin the car's getting down into second gear but that's really from f absolutely flat out here well in excess of 100 miles an hour as we go back and pick up Richard Sykes in car number 21 who's finally got ahead of Steve Boyle so Psyche up into fourth place Steve Boyle's now fifth and remember he was pole position and through into the lead goes Jerry Taylor Taylor's got through into the lead at the S's I'll tell you what you don't see that many passes going in there that was a very good pass by Jerry Taylor and good clean racing from Jerry and his teammate Richard Styrin up across the line they go so it's Jerry Taylor who leads it he's had two wins so far this year remember at the start of the season we had a run of meetings with drivers taking double wins now Jerry Taylor took the two wins at Alton Park in round one and since then he's been fourth, second, third, second twice more and three thirds at Brands Hatch before Olympic duty but look at now, look at Richard Styrin putting the pressure back on him Steve Boyles looks to the inside of Richard Sykes to challenge for fourth place but Sykes taking the wide line on the Dean hairpin and now a little bit of straight if you get if you get up the inside at the Dean Hairpin it converts to the outside here at Yentwood and then you've got to hang in all the way around the outside till you get to the second part of Piff Path which is the next corner the race leaders are coming up under back marker traffic Philip Waters in the light blue 924 is passed 
first by Jerry Taylor, then by Richard Starr, in through safe and sound. Next is Carl Ross in the white 924, the 66 car. So we're getting really great coverage here. We're getting to see most of the drivers in the course of this first 20-minute race. Now, Jerry Taylor is through. And looking to take his third race win of the season. Richard Styron at the moment, though, the fastest man on track. Fastest in the productions is Steve Brown, with Simon Hawksley, the race leader in the 924s, having the honours there. But Jerry Taylor, chairman of Taylor's Foundry Limit Limited and uh, a renowned sportsman, as we've said before. Rode internationally for Great Britain in cycling, so... A lot of people getting on the uh, cycling bandwagon at the moment with the big success in the Olympics. And Jerry Taylor's a, a part of our cycling history. A top man, and of course still a top man. Now he's racing here as a little bump from the uh, 21 car. There is Nick Hull still chasing. So Nick Hull enjoying his race. Arjo Josh, car number 44 the uh, man from uh, Brighton in East Sussex having a good scrap at the moment Nick Hull down behind him so Arjo trying to work out the positions here Arjo Josh in 10th place Nick Hull in 11th only the one only the one boxster down behind them at present which is Gary Goodwin so back we go with Adam Croft Adam running in fifth position at present so trying to close down on those cars in front Adam's best lap time uh, a 144 and past him past her, Adam Croft goes goes Cliff Graham in car number 12 so Cliff Graham goes through we saw Mike Seller make a, a little bit of a have a move earlier a problem earlier on in the yellow car and he's caught back up with Adam Croft now wondering whether Adam's got problems of his own because Cliff Graham has caught him and now Mike Seller is closing in as well. Croft though about to repay the favour, looks down the inside as they come out of turn four on the main straight under the starting gantry into turn one. Top speed, well over 100 miles an hour. Power their way round turn one. And as we said, if you hit that wall, it's going to be a write off, it's going to hurt. And these drivers really putting that thought out of their mind. Back on board we go with Adam Croft. Still challenging, down a sideways moment there from Cliff Graham. Croft goes through. Mike Seller will have gone through as well, assuming he hasn't been collected. Down the straight, in towards Edward once again. We go back to our race leaders. Jerry Taylor pulling out a couple of lengths now over Richard Styron in second place. Styron, the championship leader, 223 points. 20 points clear of Richard Sykes. Then Jerry Taylor third in the championship on 203. Richard Sykes, the most consistent driver in the championship. No DNFs for him this year. His worst results, uh, three fourth places. And, of course, the points that, that we present you are the net points with the drop scores taken into account. Richard Styron with two non-finishes at the start of the year. Jerry Taylor has uh, had Silverstone as his drop round. So, Jerry Taylor in 16. What a fantastic race he has had best lap time of 142.067 back on lap three Richard Starin's best lap 141.988 possibly peaked a little bit early look at the gap back between the two Taylor now even in the later stages is starting to pull away and the gap two two and a half seconds clear of Richard Styron David Beerman having a lonely race at the moment he's in third position back we go with Nick Hull and R. Joe Josh in very much involved in their battle now down steel straight goes the race leader still up amongst the back marker traffic which he's picking off one by one it's going to be a 12 lap race for the leaders in this 20 minutes it's going to be 11 laps for the Porsche 924s that have been lapped all fair of course because everyone gets their 20 minutes of race time no safety car interventions required thus far so Jerry Taylor looking for a third win of the championship. What a great drive for him. He started in second position. Didn't get the advantage of that run from the outside that you sometimes see at the start here at Rockingham, but worked hard and made the pass on this part, this part of the course going into the Brook S's.
out of turn four. Hard on the gas, still chasing the 924s in front of him. And there is the chequered flag. Jerry Taylor takes his third win of the season, his first win since the first round of the year. It's second place and again 100% on the podium for Richard Styrin. And there is David Beerman who takes third. Beerman just passing Alistair Kirkham who takes third place in the 924s. Richard Sykes is fourth. Steve Boyles in fifth place from Adam Croft. A superb way to start our weekend here at Rockingham in the Logson Group Porsche Championship. Round 13. Well, for the superstitious of us, that's out of the way. I suspect Rebecca Jackson and ultimately Tony McVinsky, who were uh, non finishers, will be pleased to get it out of the way. Here, though, is Steve Brown, who leads the low fat production boxsters out of turn four. It's going to be another win for Steve, and his eighth win in class of the season up across the line. Steve Potts has had five wins. He takes second place in class. Another excellent finish for him but here's confirmation of Jerry Taylor's win Richard Styrin in second place from David Beerman then it was Psyche Richard Sykes in fourth followed by Stephen Boyles and Adam Croft taking sixth position getting the better at the end of Mike Seller who came home in seventh in the production Steve Brown wins from Stephen Potts and Bernie Printy in third and the 924s a first win of the year to Simon Hawksley with Sean Siddle second and Alistair Kirkham in third place. A uh, great day in the office, quite frankly, for Taylor's Family Motorsport. Um, Richard was on pole. Uh, I was second, so we had the front row. Uh, so the, the job this morning went very well. Um, it's always a little bit difficult for me. I own the business, I own the company. Um, I'm racing as well, so I want to sort of make sure that my, my customers get the best out of it. Um, Richard obviously being one of my customers, um, and I don't want both the cars hitting each other on the, on the way out there. But it was a good race. Um, we started very sensibly, just sort of bedded the cars in the first two laps, got a little bit of a, a bit of daylight between us and David Beerman, uh, who ended up finishing third. Um, and then we could start having our own little race. So I was sort of in a position running second to see where I was perhaps had the edge more than Richard did around the circuit. The circuit changes quite dramatically in a very short space of time. Um, bided my time and sort of took the lunge down the inside, hoping that um, my teammate wouldn't come across me. He didn't. It was a good, a good manoeuvre. Uh, the brakes held out because they'd been getting very hot all day. Um, and then it all played into my hands. Uh, I think Richard managed to get a, a stuck behind a couple of the 924s, which gave me a little bit more of a space. Um, and then we just coasted the cars home to the finish. So, yeah, a 1 2 for Taylor's Foundry. I'm really pleased to get uh, another win under my belt. I've had two already, both at Alton Park at the start of the season. So, nice to do it again. There's life in the old dog yet. Um, and we've got another race tomorrow. And apparently, it's going to be even warmer tomorrow. So, I can't wait to see how the brakes last then. Yeah, the Wiley Fox was. Um it was clear today that the temperature and looking after the car was going to be critical. I think it's 30 degrees. Um, you've got this banking where you're doing 125 to a dead stop braking. So it was clear in qualifying, there was just a tenth between us, that the race was going to be so close. And the first half I led quite nicely, looked in the mirror, and the Wiley Fox was sat there cooling his car down, getting some fresh air, looking after his brakes. And I noticed behind Jerry we got a gap on David Behrman. Um, so I thought, what do we do as teammates here? Race each other um, tough in these hot conditions, look after cars. It was so difficult. And it was clear that Jerry had looked after his a bit better. Um, and the Fox just beat me. Um, well, we qualified third, which was a good result for the team. Um, we, we, were, we were trying to find pace yesterday in, in testing. Um, so third, I think, was the best we could hope for. The TF boys were running fairly quickly. It was a good start, got away well, um, managed to keep Steve Balls at bay, who was running very, very quickly in a 987, um, down into the first corner and, and away we went. Started on pole this morning and uh, pulled in a little bit early in the practice qualifying this morning uh, because the brakes went and then uh, as soon as I'd stopped the car set on fire so uh, there was a, a lot of extinguishing all over the, the car, just about got all that cleared out. And then uh, just about made it onto the grid and then led the race start to finish. So I was amazed, really, really, uh, really pleased.
back to Rockingham Motor Speedway for round 14 coming up in a few minutes time let's chat to Anthony McVinsky a non-finish in race number one well we, we qualified reasonably well until I outbreak myself into the chicane going onto the banking and not the exhaust off and had to come back in with the engine overheating but we managed to cure that problem ready for the race got out onto the race and we were racing quite well in fourth place dicing with Alistair Kirkham in third and unfortunately break, out break myself into turn two and put it on the grass and knock the exhaust off again so we had to retire unfortunately. Yeah, it was very unlucky especially because Alistair had a few problems himself so uh, you could have had the third spot couldn't you? Well Alistair apologised he thought that he'd pushed me a bit wide and caused me to outbreak and I said but that was just racing and I was pleased that Alistair finished third and it was we had a good race. Here's the grid for race number two of our programme, round 14 of the championship. Jerry Taylor on pole position once again on his outside. It's Richard Styrin. 924 pole going to Simon Hawksley once again. Of course, the production boxsters with Stephen Brown. So the challenges of uh, Rockingham, round 13 filmed on the Saturday of the weekend, round 14 this one filmed on day two of the BRSCC's massive weekend, I've got to say a lot of cars in the paddock and everyone that's here enjoying the racing immensely, a good cross section of racing, lots of sports car racing, some single seater action as well and uh, the pickups using the oval, well, we're concentrating on the two mile international Super sports car circuit. 2.05 miles long and away they go. Great start as ever from the red car on the outside line, which is Jerry Taylor. So Jerry Jerry Taylor, sorry, on the inside leads them around turn one side by side with Richard Styrin. They've all made a great start. And as you heard, Richard Styrin say it's 125 miles an hour around turn one. Mike Seller in 33 trying to challenge Adam Croft look at the outside line as they go down into the Dean hairpin Steve Boyle's running in fourth place the news here is that Richard Sykes is is a non-starter in this one so Steve Boyle's fourth fifth position car number five Adam Croft at the moment David Beerman ahead of him followed by Mike Seller so everybody gets away safe and well race leader though car number 16 from pole position Jerry Taylor the, the uh, two teammates swapping over for this one Richard Styron getting pole for race number one Jerry Taylor pole on race two as Nick Hull goes off on the grass well you can see Steve Brown and Steve Potts very close together still in the productions no chance at all for Potts to pull away and certainly being kept honest at the moment in the production class and I was talking to championship coordinator John Clark today told me that obviously the production's brought in as a sort of an entry level box to championship the guys that are in it all looking at stepping up into the race class A for next year so I wonder how many productions there'll be let's hope that uh, a few new drivers will come in and keep that class alive so it certainly uh, shows how cost effective even the main championship is that drivers are looking at coming straight in to the main part of the championship so race leaders go look how close they get to the wall Jerry Taylor in black and white leading Richard Steyer in second in the red and white car third place David Beerman fourth is Steve Boyles well disappointing to lose Psyche I've got to say very much capable driver three wins for him at Snetterton and one of the few drivers who took the battle to David Clark last season but the race leaders down towards the hairpin again David Beerman having a good go. Oh, Rebecca Jackson, what a lousy weekend for the zero car. Rebecca Jackson is not going to get much race mileage here for her entry fears. We look at Steve Boyle still running well in the 77 car. So Jerry Taylor on his way. Richard Steyer in second. Dave Beerman third. Then Steve Boyle's in 77. Boyles who joined the championship in the second event of the year at Snetterton so remember you, you do have the option to drop scores so his will effectively be Alton Park round one I think most of the drivers have had retirements or no shows or non-starts that they can count the only one who didn't have as we mentioned in race one is, is Richard Sykes certainly in the uh, in the main class in the productions just having a look yeah both all of the drivers there won't have to drop any scores 
And in the 94s, well, Rebecca Jackson, this is going to be... Yeah, she's already had a, a, a non-start and a, a couple of retirements, so Rebecca won't drop any points. So I think pretty much the scores now, it's going to be uh, points of points now, rather than having to worry about net points, which is probably less confusing for the statisticians out there. Around turn one they go, really fantastic action from these guys. We look at Alistair Kirkham in car number seven, so Kirkham running well. He comes off of turn four and busy chasing the blue car of Sean Siddle. Jerry Taylor still out front though in 16, having a good run at the moment ahead of his teammate Jerry Taylor. You heard the two really respect each other greatly, one being team owner, the other being customer. And the last thing they need to do is take each other off. But they did pull out a reasonable lead over David Beerman in race number one. It looks like that pattern starting to repeat itself here. Although Beerman, I think, might, might have found a little bit more. He's closer to them than he was at the same stage of the first race. Fourth place is Steve Boyles. In fifth position, Adam Croft in the Martini 5 car. Through go the top three. Into shot comes Adam Croft. Croft coming under pressure from Cliff Graham. Cliff finished down behind Mike Seller in the first race of the day. Mike taking seventh place, Cliff Graham in eighth. Then uh, Ian Loggy after Cliff Graham and Nick Hull tenth. From Arjo Josh, Gary Goodwin, the remaining finisher in the Boxsters. Through the Brook S's they go, top three. Very little to choose from them, but early days in this 20-minute race for sure. Out of turn four. So the midday sun at its hottest. It was the hottest day of the year yesterday for round 13. It's even hotter today, a degree or so uh, warmer. You heard Richard Styron make that prediction in the interviews, and it is hotter here. A little bit of cloud cover from time to time, which is just making things that little bit more comfortable. As we go back and have a look at Simon Hawksley at the moment, down in second position. So Sean Siddle has uh, got ahead. There is Siddle in blue, running in first place. Simon Hawksley, yesterday's winner, in second place, Alistair Kirkham running in third place. Now, Sean Siddle uh, this year has had the one win, two fastest laps so far for him. And uh, as we said, missed the Silverstone round. So good to have him back and looking for win number two. You've got to say both classes, very competitive. We've had four different winners in the Boxsters. We've had... Different people setting pole position time. The 94s have had lots of different winners as well. There's Carl Rossin in 66, the 43-year-old from Bedfordshire. Not too far for him to travel to race here. Runs uh, industrial electrical contractors with his his dad. And we go back and see car number, number 12, Cliff Graham, in the mix there at the moment ahead of Adam Croft so Cliff Graham gets ahead of Adam Croft and back with our race leaders this is where we saw the change of lead in race number one it's not happening now Jerry Taylor well, he's got the advantage at the moment still Richard Steyer in second but third place David Beerman the winner at Brands Hatch running well back with Adam Croft car number 35 coming out from Harrogate Yorkshire fourth season of racing in the 924s and one of the Many cars prepared by the Ta Taylor Foundry team as we go back down the order. Arjo Josh in the mix. 24 is John Loggy. So John Loggy back in his original car. There is Sean Siddle though getting away at the moment with the 924 lead. So Siddle with a bit of breathing space between himself and Simon Hawksley, who was so chuffed to get win and fastest lap in race number one. There's Arjo Josh. Still leading Ian Loggy, who looks around the inside and, and goes through. Ian Loggy's through on the inside as they go down into Yentwood. Great pass for him and makes up the position. So the Sussex man, with a little bit of work to do now in car number 44. See whether he can get him back. You can see Mike Seller up ahead of them in the yellow 33 then further down the road the other white uh, car of Adam Croft the Ian Loggy championship sponsor for the uh, Logsum group 
having a, a good race and managing to get the pass but still out front it's Jerry Taylor from the second place car of Richard Starin this is pretty much in a lot of other formulas the result of race one determines the grid for race two we had a separate qualifying session today but in essence of course the, the cars have come out in the order in which they finish race one so very similar to other racing that you'll see in the UK and battle resumed between these two at the moment it doesn't look like Richard Starin is going to be quick enough to be able to close in on Jerry Taylor who's just got a little bit of breathing space let's have a look as they come around the hairpin couple of lengths all following each other wheel for wheel with the heat here today it might be a, a battle of tactics here at Rockingham because it's a very demanding circuit oh Rebecca Jackson's got going again in car zero which is good so well done Rebecca she'll be looking to pick up some points and try and get third position in the championship of course Rebecca one of the many drivers that's taken a win that was a, a Snetterton class win at Snetterton hesitate to call them classes they are of course classes but they're having their own race it's just as important to win in the 924s as it is to win in the Boxsters and that's exactly what this man's looking to do Jerry Taylor in the 16 car is hammering away now is it me or are we starting to see Richard Starr begin to close in well I think that was probably under braking for the Tarzan hairpin one of the slower corners on the track down into the Brook S's probably distance about the same through the Brook S's round the left hand of the last part of it the third part of it and back out onto the main straight are we going to see another win for Jerry Taylor to make it another double to add to the one that he got at Alton Park at the start of the season that remains to be seen as they pile their way around turn one David Beerman back in third place want to keep up with all the racing action at the track well download the new go racing TV iPhone and Android app and remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter Welcome back to Rockingham. We're looking at the leading and second place getting crossed up in the 924. Simon Hawksley, race one winner here at Rockingham. Really chasing hard, but at the moment, Sean Siddle, the leading 924 in blue. They go on to turn four. The race still led at present by Jerry Taylor from Richard Steyer. But this is the scrap for the production boxers, the low fat boxers, as we like to call them. And leading those again is Stephen Brown. Stephen looking for his ninth win of the season Steve Potts looking for his sixth and Potts keeping him honest at the moment in the okay. black 25 car Stephen Brown of course moved up from the 924s rookie of the year in 2007 runner up in 2010 924 champion last year so probably right and properly was looking about looking to move up and the 37 year old from Banbury giving a very good account of himself so Potts hanging on at the moment to second position Steve Brown though the race leader in car number two very good livery on the production car and those two engaged in battle now as are these two it looks like things getting a little bit closer between Richard Styron in 99 and Jerry Taylor in car number 16 still out front as they go down to the Entwood corner and then around Chapman curve and up into uh, Piff Path. In actual fact, no, they're coming down to Tarzan down into the Brook S's. This is where we saw the change for the lead earlier on. So, some apologies for that. Sometimes the infield cameras could be a little bit confusing as we go back and look at Nick Hull car number 18 I think he's on his own at the moment I can't see anybody around Nick so enjoying the track time uh, for sure but not engaged in battle with anyone so he makes his way down the school straight in towards the Brook S's once again here is 66 Carl Rossin running at the moment fourth in the 924 Simon Hawksley leading remember one race one he's in second position chasing Sean Siddle Alistair Kirkham still third now where is Jerry Taylor where is Jerry Taylor there is Richard Styron and we look ahead I can't see can't see Jerry Taylor there because the race leader is coming up to lap Philip Waters in the 924 and we're going to have a look back here and see what's happened 
it's David Beerman in second place now. So Richard Styron has taken over the lead. David Beerman second. And to answer the question, back in fourth place behind Steve Boyles is Jerry Taylor. Now, what happened there? We, we don't know. Such a big, vast circuit, this, this one, with so many twists and turns. It's difficult to catch all of the action all the time. It looks to me that something's happened while we were focused on the battle for the production boxers. So a little bit of work to do then for Jerry Taylor to try and climb his way back. Arjo Josh and Nick Hull dicing over eighth place at the moment. Ian Locke ahead of them. And Richard Styron, if he looks out of his rear view mirror, it's not a huge gap, but it's a decent enough gap over David Beerman. And we've got a battle on for third now. Jerry Taylor looking for third place. He hasn't been lower than, than third position since round three of this year's championship at Snetterton so he'll be very keen to get back on the podium and try to de depose the 77 car of Steve Boyles who if you look at his results over the course of the season have been getting better and better and better seemingly patience and experience in the car really rewarding him but Arjo Josh and Nick Hull engaged in the battle for eighth place Arjo with the upper hand at the moment from Nick if you look at the lap times for all of the cars they're all pretty consistent and and similar to yesterday's times one minute 42 for the quickest drivers rick styron again second setting the fastest lap on the race in the early stages this what this time on lap two so far one minute 42.037 fastest in the 924s is sean siddle who seems to have taken over the uh, mantle of top dog this weekend one minute 50.6 one minute 50.4 yesterday for Simon Hawksley. So the time's very slightly slower in all three classes from yesterday. Richard Styron carries on though, still out front. Part three of the Brook S's and with a very decent lead at the moment is the scrap for third place. Steve Boyle still hanging on to it, but Jerry Taylor is definitely after him. So Jerry's going to have to deal with Steve Boyles very quickly if he wants to be in a position to get back onto second goes up to the wall well it might be an idea here perhaps to get in the draft around turn one and pull out and maybe nip down the inside probably much easier said than done of course from the luxury of the commentary position Arjo and Nick still involved so Arjo trying to get up into eighth place which Nick Hull holds at the moment see a little bump there as they come on turn four I don't know if that will affect the cars that use turn four here at Rockham try and keep a look on that on later laps when they just come out of the Brook S's and here's the challenge and through on the inside goes David Beerman Beerman back into third place great opportune moment dives up the inside of Stephen Boyles Stephen's going to be a little bit miffed about that I think because he was looking for his uh, his third podium in two race weekends he's already lost a little bit of ground to Jerry Taylor so hardline Stephen fourth position is going to be a good result for him though make no mistake about that so they round the tiles and hairpin named after the corner at the famous Dutch Zandvoort circuit and go down the straight as David Beerman manages to nip past Alistair Kirkham running third in the 924s And very much on their way towards the flag now, these drivers. So we're looking at the third place car of David Beerman. Beg your pardon, second place car. That's a habit from race one. Second place, David Beerman. Race leader, Richard Styrin. And third place at the moment, Jerry Taylor. Will he be able to close in? Well, he's still got a fair bit of work to do. Now, the lap times between the two, Beerman are 142. Uh, four, his best lap on lap three and Jerry Taylor's best lap were 142-1 on lap two so you can see the minuscule amounts between the two guys at their best and that really means it's going to be hard work for Jerry Taylor to try and close in but we're back with the race leader Richard Styron looking for he had to wait a long time he had to wait for Cadwell Park round six for his first win of the season and took a double there third win was at Brands Hatch fourth and fifth wins at Silverstone so looking for win number six now as Arjo Josh goes down the inside 
of Mick Hull. Great manoeuvre by Arjo as he goes down the inside into Tarzan. You don't often, you see people try there. You don't very often see too many moves stick at that particular corner. But Arjo did it. What a great manoeuvre for him. But Nick Hull is coming back at him. Not content to perhaps let him get away with that. We're looking at the second place, 924, just ahead of the race leader. And now Jerry Taylor has caught David Beerman. Is he going to be able to get past him, though? This is the question. Out onto turn four. But the win, the sixth win of the season to Richard Styrin. David Beerman's done enough to hang on to second. Jerry Taylor in third place. Cracking stuff from him. The production class again, led by Stephen Brown in car number two, who will take his ninth win of the 2012 Logson Group Porsche Championship second place in the productions will go once again to Stephen Potts Sean Siddle it is that takes the win in the 924 it is so hot out there today but the drivers have overcome it with Richard Styron winning from David Beerman Jerry Taylor in third he's on the podium again Steve Boyles fourth Cliff Graham comes through for fifth place his best result of the season then Mike Seller in sixth place car number 33 great finish for him in the production Steve Brown wins from Steve Potts Bernie Printy in third place once again another finish for him Sean Siddle though wins the 924s Simon Hawksley adds a second place to his win in race one and Alistair Kirkham gets the third place fastest lap going to Sean Siddle Again, it was very, very hot, um, and we knew that the car possibly could go off, whether it be tyres or brakes. Jerry and I got away really nicely at the start. David Behrman and Steve Boyles also got away nicely. So I think we're in a nice train of four. And then it was just one of the best races for the series we've had this year. Um, nobody could drop anybody. Jerry wasn't making a single mistake. David wasn't making any behind. Um, Probably a race of attrition, really. Um, so I thought, pressure Jerry, pressure Jerry. Was using up the banking, and um, um, I think he had a mixture of um, outbreaking himself a little and possibly his brakes. Um, great race win, but absolutely delighted. Okay, Jerry, well, uh, you won yesterday. You're still smiling. You finished third in the second race. Uh, just uh, an unforced error, I think, was it? It was, really, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, quite daft, really. I, quite, I enjoyed my third place kind of more than I did my first place yesterday. There's a bit of racing. I mean, yesterday, it was just myself and Rick. Um, I was putting Rick under a bit of pressure. He made a little a tiny mistake. I benefited from it. Um, Rick was putting me under pressure today. I was leading the race for about two-thirds, I guess. Um, kind of outbreak myself. The, the pedal went long, coming, in, coming off a of turn two into the hairpin. Outbreak myself quickly did a U-turn back onto the circuit and a bit surprised to see um, Dave and uh, Steve Boyle so close behind. So, was in fourth, um, had a nice little tussle again putting pressure on um, Steve Boyle, managed to get third back. Um, on the last lap, side by side with Dave Beerman, but he had the better racing line and top marks to him. He deserved his second place. Um, just wish, probably the first box to race, especially in this heat, that I wish it was a little bit longer, but um, hey-ho. No, good weekend all round. Uh, you know, my teammate Rick had, had, a, had a second and a first done his championship the world of good and um, yeah very pleased myself here's the points then Rick Steyer in top of the tree Richard Sykes still second Jerry Taylor though getting closer and closer he's third David Beerman fourth from Adam Croft and Steve Boyles impressive still in sixth place The production still led by Steve Potts. Steve Brown could still pick it up in the closing stages of the year. Bernie Printy in third. The 924s led by Alistair Kirkham with Sean Siddle second and Simon Hawksley in third place.